Hello, I'm Jason, and on this episode of Hanging with the Heisers, we're going to make some mead. Why make mead, you say? <laughs> because I'm a Viking and I fucking like it. So anyway, what we're going to need to get started is something to make the mead in. My wife, she's behind the scenes over there laughing at me while she's smoking a big fat one. <laughs> So anyway, I got this at the Amish store for a dollar, glass jar, plastic lid, and a seal, which I drilled a hole in, half inch, to put this rubber grommet in, because you're going to need that for your airlock. And so this is the airlock, you can get these on eBay or Amazon. It's just a little thing to keep the air from getting into your brew. And I got a big cylinder. A plastic spoon. <laughs> for stirring. <laughs> and your run-of-the-mill turkey baster. I don't know what else we could use that for. Got a little scale here. We're going to need that to weigh the honey. We got some yeast, K1B1116. I guess that's the good stuff. So. And of course we got a gallon of honey, which I warmed up earlier. And we're going to have to weigh out three pounds of that. But before we do all this, we have to sterilize this stuff. And I like to use the star sand. I just put about a gallon and a half of water in the tub over here and then add a half an ounce of this to it. Stir it around a little bit. It has a thing to measure it right on the cap. So. Anything to make it easier. So you want to take this stuff, switch this around a little. Just dip it in there or throw it all in there. Well, you don't want to throw it because you don't want to break it, of course. Oh, we got this thing too, I forgot to mention. You don't actually need this, but if you want to know your alcohol content, you need to get a hydrometer so that you can take a reading before and during to see what your alcohol content is at. So we gotta sterilize all this stuff. And we're gonna just take it out. Set it over here to dry. Because it has well they say let it dry, but so we just put all the stuff over here to dry. Probably take about 10 minutes. So we'll take a little break while this is dry. So now that this stuff's all dry, mostly, we need to take this jar, turn on our little scale, set to ounces, put this on there, then zero it out. I think I just hit the wrong thing. Let's try that again. So hit the power button, zero it out. Now we're at zero. So we get the honey, which I got this on Amazon last year when it was cheap. <laughs> so here's the tricky part. I might need a, well, let's just, Get crazy. Do you want a funnel? Do I need a funnel? Let's see if I can you pour it in there. Mm -hmm. The hard part's gonna be watching when it gets to three pounds. So that was almost bad. <laughs> it's actually a little over three pounds, but that won't matter. Mmm. <laughs> I love me some honey. That's probably why I like me too. Because I like alcohol and I like honey. 
We'll have to clean that up later. Mmm, how unsanitary. So now we've got the honey in there. We want to add the liquid, which you can just use water if you want to make plain mead. But I'm going to use pineapple juice. <laughs> Because I've made some pineapple mead before and everybody liked it. It seems to be the favorite one. 100% pineapple juice. <clears throat> yep. 100% all natural. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we just pour a bunch in there. You can fill the whole jar about up to here with whatever liquid you're using. You just got to leave room for it to bubble. Or you might have uh, an accident like I've had where it bubbles all over and gets all over everything. And the dog wants in. So once that's in there, you just get your little spoon and start stirring. This usually takes a while. You can shake it like if you use a jug or something, which is a little easier to work with because you can just shake the hell out of it. But you want to make sure all the honey dissolves. And you can pretty much tell just by looking if there's honey in there because it'll string off the spoon. And you can see it on the bottom. <clears throat> stirring, stirring. We know some people that like to stir the pot. Mm -hmm. Well, we quit hanging out with them. So. Actually, I think warming it up really helps it dissolve quicker, too. So now that that's stirred up, we can. I really want it to be up to about here, so I'm going to add a little bit. This is just regular tap water. I just put it in this jug because it has to be at like room temperature. So I'm just going to add about that much water. Stir that up again. <clears throat> a lot of people like to take the yeast and set it aside in a cup of warm water so it can get activated or whatever but I don't ever do that I just throw it in when I'm done all right so now we need to take a reading of this because that's the way I like to do it so I can tell how much alcohol is in here so we take our hydrometer put it in here get our turkey baster put it together and Fill this up until the hydrometer starts floating. It turns into alcohol without the yeast. What's that? Does it turn into alcohol without the um, yeast? Right now it's actually measuring the sugar. Mm. Like and then have... as the yeast eats the sugar and makes the alcohol, it'll measure it on this other part. Oh, okay. So right now we're seeing how much sugar is in here. And I can't do that without my spectacles. So this is very high sugar content, probably because I put more than three pounds of honey. This is reading at 1.175, so that's pretty high. We need to write that down. Babe, could you grab me a pen and paper quick? Sanitize my hands. Can I need to write it down for you? Yeah, 1.175. And then you just want to remember, write it down so you can check later. So now all we got to do is add this yeast. And you only need to use like a half a packet of this, which I think is... like a almost a teaspoon so like a three quarters of a teaspoon but you can just guess because there's enough in here to make two gallons you don't want to just waste it and throw the whole pack in there 
And if you store that in a refrigerator, it'll be good for a while. So the yeast is in there. I'm just let it set for a minute before this back on. So this is going to turn out to be a really sweet, more like a dessert type of mead. Not something you want to just sit and drink all night, probably. <laughs> And we're going to stir this up so this yeast gets mixed in there. I mean, it's really easy to make alcohol of any kind because if you want to make beer, it's pretty much the same thing, except you have to use heat. Or wine is made the same way. You can get a gallon of Welch's grape juice. And just add two cups of sugar and a half a pack of yeast and shake it all up and let it set for a month. And that makes some pretty good wine. Alright, so once you mix it all together, all you have to do is... Not that. <laughs> Put this rubber stopper in first. I never claimed to be a teacher. This is the first time even doing a video. So then you want to take your airlock. You can put uh, like cheap alcohol, like vodka or something in here. It's just to kill anything that might try to get into the mead. But I just use the sterilized water and fill it up to where it's supposed to be. Drop the little thing in there. Where's the... I need to stick it out there. I need a cat. Let me get it. It's over here. One second. Any day now. Talk about unorganized. Here we go. Yeah, so then you put a cap on here and keep the bugs out. I started making mead back during when the COVID started. Oh my God, I might get banned for saying COVID. Just because I couldn't really find it anywhere and I really liked it and my friends all drink it. So I said, hell, oh, I'm just going to make it. <laughs> and I'll have it all the time. And I actually have a pretty good stockpile going. So once you get this all done, that's what it looks like. You put it somewhere cool and dark for, I don't know, a few weeks. You can just let it set. Or you can pick it up every day for like the first week and just switch it around to move all that stuff around and then set it back down. But you don't even want to do anything to it really for about three weeks, I'd say. Then that's when this comes in again. You'd get it out, get some out, put it in here. Get your hydrometer, put it in, see what the reading is, write that down. And you really want to just keep it going until all the sugar is eaten or the yeast are dead. And the only way to do that is by keep testing it. And if it gets to a point where it doesn't seem to change the number of the reading within like four days, it stays the same, then it's pretty much done. Then you can take it out and bottle it, or put it in a pitcher, put it in the refrigerator, whatever you're going to do. But if you want to store it for a long time, you do have to bottle it, and I can make another video on that. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something, and tune in next time. Like and subscribe. <laughs>